Greetings, I'm Barent, and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. Today, we're going to continue our playthrough of Sleeping Gods. We have made it through most of the second deck of adventure cards. We only have the hardest ones left. Once we do that, we're then going to have to go ahead and take advantage of the second part of this, and then we're going to go into another set of adventure decks. So we're not, we're, we're a little over halfway done, and I'm excited to continue the adventure. Here are our adventure cards. We have our command, all the stuff that we have gathered through our adventure so far. Our ship is taken some damage. We're up in the bridge. And these I want to mention, I didn't actually have these out of my second playthrough because I didn't actually ever go to the deck. If you go to the deck, then you can draw these adventure tokens. But I didn't even go there in the second second video. Hopefully we might get there this time because we do know a couple of these are still good ones because we placed them in a certain order in the very first video. So we might get back to those. We're, I'm excited to keep on going. We're looking for some more artifacts or totems, I mean, and we have four right now. But hopefully we're keeping up with Colin. I don't know if we are. I'm to find out when we're completely done. This is so much fun. All right, let's go ahead and see what happens to the Manticore. And if you're excited to do that, then I need you to meet me at the table. out view again of our entire crew. You can see where we left off. We have a few people with some of the fatigue on, actually quite a bit of them, and we have a few people that are wounded, but it's not too bad. Now, of course, we could make about any type of food we want that could probably clear a lot of this, so we'll see how that works. Now, we only have a few adventure cards slotted in here, but and we have some great experience cards out on our characters and a few massively powerful items. So let's go ahead and start our adventure. We left off having to do a ship action. So I'm gonna go ahead and I think we're gonna to go to the quarters. That way we can remove the command on of some of our cards and put that right here. I do get three commands. So we're gonna grab one more command and there is one card I wanna talk about before we move too much farther. And that's this card right here. This card is not in any type of FAQ that I could find yet. Um, this is the ghost that we had and she found her dad. So for some reason I would believe that this would be removed even though it doesn't say so and it hasn't said anything in any of the stories. But I'm going to get rid of this card and put it back in the back in the box because I really don't think we should have it because the quest was complete and I think she would go on. Kind of like the other one we had where she was trapped with that dead, uh, the necrotic elephant of death. She well, had to remove that card. I would believe we removed this card as well because now she's with her dad, she's going to be fine. All right, we're going to move on now. That was a lot of talking for just one little card. We're going to go ahead now and see what happens to our our group here. But first I have to draw a card in the quarters and we're going to see what we get. We got a maintain instant effect repair one ship damage oh if i slot this i can get one slit ship damage repaired i think that might be pretty good because we're coming to the end of these cards and remember it's going to be very similar to the first time i'm going to lose all the cards that i have slotted under our characters so if i can maybe get some other cards ready to go that might be a good idea like keeping this jack of all trades would be probably good because it's pretty good and maybe discarding this. I might want to slot this eventually because I can use it during a battle before we have to get rid of all our cards under our characters. But I don't know which one we're going to get. I think we're going to get rid of Rapid Strike. We're going to go ahead and discard that one. Now, let's go ahead and see what happens to our people. I think that's everything we did. We have to go ahead and do a ship action. Then we have to do our event. Let's draw it. We have found a giant turtle. Oh, this is awesome. I wonder which one it is. Michelangelo, Leonardo, Donatello. Oh, probably none of them. And, and <laughs> the head emerges from the choppy water. Try to avoid the turtle, two ship damage, or attack the turtle, strength eight, fail negative five health, but I gain a meat. Well, I don't need any meat, that's for sure. I think, wow, that's a tough card to deal with, two ship damage. Look, our ship is pretty banged up as it is, and I'm going to be going into some pretty deadly waters probably pretty soon, because we're going to be making a big move, which could damage our ship even more. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Our ship can take seven more damage. we got plenty of money, and if we get to a port, we can heal it pretty good. I think I'm just going to go ahead, try to avoid the turtle, and take two ship damage. So we're going to discard that card and see where our damage is. It's in, well, i got to turn those cards over, two and three. So let's go ahead and put a couple damage there. One's going to go up here in the deck. And the other one, the sick bay is unusable now, but that's okay. I don't really use it. <laughs> probably should, but I don't. All right, that's the end of our event. We're going to go into our two actions. 
But before we do, I think I'm going to go ahead and use our meat, our Alzarian smoked fish. This is a fantastic card. I think I've used it more than any other card I have. We're going to go ahead and spend one of our command. We're going to go ahead and put it on the card. And we're going to have to spend two meat and a carrot. But I'm not going to use a carrot. I'm going to use this wheat because, of course, we'd still have that slotted power. It's probably the thing I've used more than anything else. When any player cooks a recipe, they must substitute an, one ingredient for another. Or may, sorry, not must. May substitute. So we're going to do that. That way we can take a lot of this fatigue off. I'm able to remove four fatigue. We're going to move one from the captain. We're going to use, move this one from Mac. We're going to remove one from Audrey as well. And I think the other person we're going to remove one from is we're going to remove one from Lawrence. Lawrence is going to go ahead and get rid of his as well. Then I also get to heal five damage. There's only four on our characters, but that's okay. I'm going to get rid of that. Now let's go ahead and move into our four, two actions. I know I said we were going to be going north to really check it out in the last video, but check this out. We're right here. Let's go ahead and look at number 97. And when I do, I have the engaged ability, so I can go ahead and get a command back. So we're going to go ahead and place one more command in our pile. You meet a Zomari trade ship. Bring us artifacts and we'll trade the secrets of a calmer mind. So we have three options here. We are four, I guess. We can one pay one artifact to gain four coins or three grain meat and vegetables. Of I believe that's three of any of those type of things. We can also gain one XP, remove one low morale token, morale token, yes, and discard adventure card 70, maddening song, if you have it, and then return to the ship. Or we can pay two artifacts, gain nine coins, two XP, and remove one fatigue and low morale. Discard adventure card 70, maddening song. If you haven't returned to the ship, or check this, I'll pay three artifacts and draw 10 market cards and gain one of them for free. Also, you get three experience, remove one fatigue and morale, discard adventure card 70, and then return to your ship. Or, of course, I can bid farewell. We're going to go ahead and do B. I don't have... Uh, three artifacts, so I do that. Instead, we're going to go ahead and do B, so we can remove a Fatigue, a Low Morale, discard Adventure Card 70, which we don't have, so I don't have to worry about that, but I also get nine coins and two experience points. We're going to gain our nine bucks here. I'm going to remove this one, and I'm also going to remove both of our artifacts. We've spent them, which was not a bad thing. It's pretty good. We're also going to remove one low fatigue from Kanan, and I think that's it. I don't have any low morale tokens. So that was our first action. Let's continue into our second action. For our second action, this is where we're going to try to move. And I'm actually going to go ahead and put a low morale token onto Audrey. The engine room goddess Audrey gets to give us a ton of this uh, crafting here. So I get one, two, three to this pole. Plus on top of that, I get to add two fate to this. So we have three, four, five pretty much, plus whatever this is. Five, six. Oh, that's too bad. Six, seven, eight, nine. We could still use this. I think we're going to. I've got that one set of gear that allows me to add three crafting to this. So we're going to go ahead and use a command to add crafting to this. And we're going to then get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is that really all I get? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, I get nine. Okay, I did add it right. Unless, of course, I want to use a different one and just pull a different card. No, I think we're good. We're just going to go ahead with that. And we get to move four spaces. And because of this, I get to ignore any hazards we move through. We're going to move north. So we're going to go over to page five. Here we are back on page five. I'm going to go right here for two three, four, up to Blood Rock. Now I get to ignore this in order because of we got a nine or better. And this time I'm not going to ignore the binding. I missed it in the entire last set of videos. I did not count this. These are two separate squares. You need to be aware of that. I actually failed miserably and completely thought this as one square in the last set. So don't do that. Always remember that this does count as one as a separation between areas. We do have one more. Oh, that's our second action. We moved. We explored 97. We moved. But now I think we're going to check out Blood Rock and see what we can find. In our, after, of course, we take the rest of our ship actions and draw our next card. For our ship action, we're going to go ahead and move up into the bridge again. That way I can go ahead and grab two command because of that's what it has. But of course, I do get one extra one because we have Lamarne, who are, we have the, what is it? Laurent, he is the old sailor. So I'm going to go ahead and grab one more. That's what we get. We also get a card. Let's check out our card. We got, we got Dodge. Discard this equipped card to give the crew member plus two. Oh, but it's a four. I'm going to discard that because we're getting really close to the end of our uh, deck, and I want to make sure we keep a lot of high cards in there. All right, let's see. We have to now draw one of these cards. Or is there anything I want to do beforehand? 
I think we're just going to go ahead and draw our card and see what happens. Come on, nothing too bad. We found a volcanic water, so this isn't going to be good. Waters around the manticore begin to boil. Navigate out of the boiling water. Lose one action this turn. Barf. Or explore water, the waters. Savvy seven. Three ship damage. Oh my gosh. One, two, three. That would leave us with only two hull left. Of course, I can repair it if we go to the port, which we probably will. But <laughs> because we've got a lot of damage, uh, I think we're going to go ahead and try for the Savvy 7 test. And to do that, we are going to use Laurent. He's get plus two to this. So I only need to draw a five or better. Let's see how we do. We're going to draw our card. Oh, maybe I'll give somebody else it too. I think we're going to give Mac it as well. He, she's going to also gain a fatigue. And she's going to go, it's going to become a negative one to damage because she has two fatigue on her already. Oh, maybe I don't want to do her. Maybe there's somebody better that's got one. I don't think there is. Okay, we're just going to go with Lauren. That'll be fine. We'll be just fine. We're going to draw our card and see what happens to us. Hopefully we get a high number. We got four, five, six. So we just need plus one. And I think we have the ability to do that. We're going to go ahead and use our card here that allows us the Wayfarer gear to gain two so we have completed our savvy seven test go ahead and discard that card totally fine we're going to go into our two actions now most of those actions are going to be found here at blood rock the first thing i want to do is investigate blood rock that's going to be the first thing we do so let's go ahead and check out number 50. But before we do, I want to actually spend two on Kanan to go ahead and remove this Frightened token from Marco. In case we can do a battle, we then could use his Pike of Everpain. All right, that's going to be what we're going to do with that. Blood Rock. In the village of Blood Rock, surrounded by red cliffs, a swarm of whitewashed huts scatters across the sandstone. At the dock, a Lucrian trader loads his Triceratops with bundles of spices and grain. So let's go ahead and see all the things we can do in Blood Rock. We have quite a few things we can do. One, we can visit the canteen. We can pay a coin. We could also explore the cliffs, Perception 5. We could speak to the Stone Oracle, but I don't have the keyword roam on any of my quests. Or, of course, we could leave. Let's go ahead and start by visiting the canteen and paying one coin. I've played enough role-playing games to know if you need a quest, you go to the canteen. It says here, the cave cantina is cool and dark. The owner squishes a scorpion on the counter with a fat thumb, ew, before taking your order. You're weak for the seas, he snorts. All your strangers are. Why in the southwest there's a fortress filled with treasure looted from ships just like yours. So we get to gain quest 42 and I get to return to number 40 or sorry 50. So we did have to pay our one coin to get that and we have our quest right here treasure fortress. The cantina owner on Blood Rock told us about a fortress filled with looted treasure in a giant rock formation to the southwest in seawater Alzaria. All right so we might keep going southwest again we'll see. I still want to check out a few things here first but we might be going back that way we'll see how it goes. I'm next going to explore the cliff with perception five and I don't think actually we're going to be going to port so why don't we use somebody that actually has some perception that could help us out and that would be the captain. The captain has plus three to perception so come on we can't fail this can we? Let's see what we got. We got a six, so I didn't even need her help, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead and turn to 50.2. The stone along the shore arches up like a tidal wave on the sand. The walls are covered in petroglyphs, which Mac studies for several minutes. It's a map of the island near here, says Mac, copying the symbols down in her journal. Looks like there's a temple or shrine to the west. Gain quest 38. We gain quest 58. It says the Temple of the Square. After studying the wall carvings in Blood Rock, we learned the location of a hidden temple on the small island to the west. All right, we'll have to check out what that is. So good news. We actually wrote down what we need here. Check it out. Square. So the temple we're going to is right here. So we just have to get over there somehow, and which means we have to go through this giant cyclone of death on top of the water. We'll have to see if we can get through that. But that was our first action. Our second action is we're actually going to go to the port now so we can take care of all the different... Well, first, we have to heal our ship. It got massively damaged, and we can get a lot of fatigue and stuff off of our characters. Looking at our port card again, we're going to go ahead and gain one grain first. We'll put that with our supply. Then I am going to go to the inn, which is going to cost us three. We're going to go ahead and pay that to remove one fatigue from every person that has a fatigue token. It's three just to remove the fatigue, but really, I think that's key. Keeping fatigue off your guys is really important in this game. So we're going to do that. And of course, we don't have anybody to heal. We are going to repair our ship for one wood or one coin for each repair we want to make. 
and our ship has one, two, three, four, five, six damage. So I'm going to pay five plus one in order to fully heal our ship of all of its damage because it had a ton of damage. Oh my gosh, we got totally wrecked. We're going to remove all that. Next thing we can do is we can go ahead and heal anybody for one. We don't have any wounds. Next, we're going to go ahead and pay two artifacts to gain three XP. We're not going to do that. So the only thing left to do is to spend XP to buy level cards. Let's go ahead and power up our guys. We have eight experience points, so I'm going to go ahead and grab these two cards. First, we get Endurance. Captain Odessa may have up to three fatigue tokens. The third does no negative effects. And the next one is this one. You may draw an extra search token when you use the deck action. I'm basically taking them. I'm probably going to use hers. I'm probably not going to use his, but I want that symbol. We don't have a lot of that out on the board. And so we're going to slot that under his card here. And apparently Kanan's token went flying over there at some point. We're going to go ahead and slot this one under, under here. And we're going to go ahead and slide this down. And so she has two experience cards. She's got a strength card and a perception card. Or sorry, cunning card. He's got a uh, perception and a savvy card. So we're getting close to getting a lot of our guys powered up. I think we need to get him something next. And then we'd be, oh, and Gregory, I think, needs something. So we're going to have to try to gain some more experience points to get stuff for them. Because right now, all they're using are their base stats. After those two actions, we're going to go ahead and move into our ship action. Before we do, I also want to mention that we are smart again. We also wrote down that we have Minotaur right over here. So that is right over on this side. So we might kind of do a big loop here to go back down here to check that out. I am going to move back over to the quarters to again gain three command and also to be able to remove two command from somebody else. I was going to remove it from Kanan. Two, I can only remove two, I can't remove three. So we still have our command on top of our Wayfarer gear, which is too bad, but that's okay. We're going to move into our next action over here. Oh, I get to draw a card. Let's see what card I get. I have gotten, oh, Power Strike. That looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and slot that one on something. Let's go ahead and get rid of Alert. I think we're going to get rid of Alert and put that one here as well. Oh, it's a three and that's a two though. Hmm. Well, that's okay. We'll be fine. I think we're going to go ahead and, oh no, I think we're going to, I think we're going to get rid of Power Strike. I lied. We're just going to keep the cards we had. We're going to get rid of that Power Strike. Not a big deal. Are we a jack of all trades? No, there we go. Uh, I got too much thinking. All right, we're going to go ahead and move into the next turn. Let's see what we find. We found Zokmir Zom Raiders. Thieves in a green Zokmir style ship latch onto the hull. Fight off the Raiders. Strength nine. When I gain an artifact, oh, we're totally going to take these guys down. I'm going to go ahead and use Kanan, who already gives me three strength because of all the cards he has placed on himself. He's got two slotted, and he has a strength in his person. So I only need to get a six, which is still quite a bit. So why don't we use somebody else? Let's go ahead and use the captain. We're going to use the captain. She is also going to give us plus two. So we now have plus five to this, so I only need to get a four or better. Let's see how we do. Come on, something good. Oh, a one? That's terrible. That's not going to help us at all. All right, I'm going to use uh, Kasumi's ability here. I'm going to go ahead and put this down right here to use that to draw a new fake card if the fake card was one. And, well, that was a one. <laughs> no good. Let's go ahead and see what we get this time. Oh, no, a two. That's still not enough unless we have an ability to give ourselves two more strength, and I don't think we do. So I have a total of one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, and I need nine. I think I'm going to play another command to draw another card, and hopefully that will be able to help us out. Of course, is I have so many adventure cards. I have to make sure there's nothing that really is going to help me, and there isn't. So we're going to go ahead and use this one right here to draw another card. At this point, I do have to shuffle up my deck. We have to give it a good old truffle shuffle here and shuffle it up because it's all been used. All right, truffly, shuffly, just like that. And we're going to go ahead and place it back down and draw another card and see what we get. All right, here we go. Come on. Oh, we got a six. There we go. That's what I needed. Okay, that is perfect. We were able to defeat these raiders. Get out of here, raiders. Don't take our stuff. I'm going to take your stuff. And we're going to go ahead and grab an artifact just like that. So let's go ahead now and move into our two actions. Just like last time, the first thing I'm going to do is place two here to get rid of the Frightened token on Audrey. I'm not a fan of status effects, as you can tell. So all of our characters have no status effects now, and a few of them have some fatigue, but that's it. We're ready to go on a big adventure here. And our big adventure starts with us moving. So let's go ahead and draw a card and see how far we move. We move four, meaning we could move up to two spaces if we want. And I actually only want to move one because I actually want to check out this. But we have to first take a strength five check, which I'm not going to do anything with any of my characters. We got a three, so we failed totally fine. I'm going to go ahead and place two ship damage down on number six 
and number three. So that's going to damage our bridge and our sick bay. I'm not too worried about that. But now we can check out card number 126. And when we do that, we get to gain one command because of our engaged card. So let's go ahead and read it. It says here if keyword grandmother turned to 126.1, sadly we don't have that. So it says your party approaches a stone tower where a young girl sits in the shade trying up her leather sandals. When she sees you coming, she wipes the dirt and dry tears from her face. Go away, she says, reaching for a rough handmade spear leaning against the base of the tower. Are you all right? You ask. She examines you slowly and you can see the weight of the world in her eyes. You're alone here, you say. Someone you care about is missing. My grandmother hasn't come back, she says. We can either A, help the girl search for her grandmother. It's savvy six tests. If I fail, I take two health and low morale. Not the end of the world. Tell the girl you'll keep an eye out for her grandmother as you search the cliff caves. Nah, let's go ahead and help her out. Why would we not help her out? We're going to go ahead and take a savvy six test. Do I want to use anybody? Why not? We're going to go ahead and use Kasumi. And Kasumi is going to go ahead and grab one of her fatigue tokens, giving me plus two to this at least. Let's see what we get. We got, oh, we got a six. I didn't even need her help. <laughs> that's okay. We're going to go ahead and turn to 126.3. And that's it. Her attitude warms once you offer to help her. Grandmother went to hunt, she says. She told me to stay behind because she thinks I'm too young. Grandfather always lets me hunt with him, but now that he's gone, things are different. He was from America, too. That's where you're from, right? Some of us, you reply. She shares a basket of warm flatbread and olives with you as you share stories of home. At this point, I get to remove one fatigue and I have to turn to 126.4. We're going to go ahead and remove the fatigue from, I think we're going to get remove it from Kanan because he's got a, one of the ones with a ton of strength. So we're going to remove that one and we're going to go ahead and move to 126.4. The Undying Sun follows you along an ancient trail marked with flapjack stacks of car and stones. The girl tells you that her name is Venmo. Nope, not Venmo. It's Ven May. <laughs> Maybe it's their style of Venmo. Grandmother is one who needs my help. She's getting too old to hunt by herself. Venme leads you along a path that climbs the side of a ravine. You cling to the red stones to avoid the sheer drop on the, a step to the left. With a sudden crack, a boulder flies past your head and breaks on a sharp rock below. A shower of dust and bits of debris rain down as though the whole canyon is falling apart. Now we have to dodge the rocks are falling. That's fantastic. So I need to use perception, which we actually boosted a couple of people's perception. So I'm actually pretty excited about this. We're going to go ahead and use Lawrence, who's got plus two to this. And we're also going to use, that's it. <laughs> Guess he's the only one I boosted. We're going to gain plus two to this. We need to get an eight. So I need to draw a six or better. Let's see how we do. We have drawn a five. That's so close, but that's okay. We have our Lucrin goggles here, where I'm going to go ahead and place one command on it to give ourselves two perception, which is going to bring it to a 7, 8, 9, which is enough. We had an, only needed an 8. So we're going to go on to 126.5. You escape the rock slide and hike for another hour. How could anyone survive in this desolate place, you wonder? A towering Karen guides you into a narrow ravine where an old woman lies trapped under a boulder. Then May sprints back, Grandmother! The old woman can barely open her eyes. Then May, what? She whispers, remember your family. Do what we have taught you. Then May wipes tears from her cheeks. You should have let me come with you, she says. I could have kept you safe. The old woman closes her eyes and is still. You bury Ven May's grandmother, building a car in, uh, to mark her grave. The walk back to the shore is mostly silent. Thank you for your helping me, Ven May says finally. I'm glad she wasn't alone when she can't continue, but smiles at you bravely. At this point, I can invite her to join my crew or bid her farewell. I don't see why I don't invite her to join my crew. That doesn't make any sense to just bid her. Sorry, your grandma's dead. See you later. <laughs> That's just terrible. Oh, my. All right. We're going to go ahead and ask her to join our crew. I have no one else here. Since my grandfather left, it's just been grandmother and I. Your grandfather's still alive? You asked, surprised. I think so. He wanted me to come with him, but grandmother wouldn't have it. So he just left one day, went looking for a way home. It was wrong. Him leaving, surviving here was almost impossible without him, and grandmother never forgave him. But there was always part of him missing, like half his heart was far away. Maybe you could help me find him. 
What? Why not? We're going to go ahead and gain three coins, two experience points, and adventure card 14. We're also going to gain quests 40 and 41, and we're going to return to the ship. We're going to gain our three coins just like that, and then we get to go ahead and grab adventure card number 14, which is her. And look, she gets perception. That's awesome. And I get two to attend my accuracy. That's amazing. Wow, she's awesome. We're going to go ahead and put her with the rest of our cards, and we get two quests. We get 40 and 41. I'm sure one of these is grandmother. Yep, grandmother right here. We help Venmay find and bury her grandmother. All right, we're going to put that aside. Then we have Venmay's grandfather. Venmay's grandfather abandoned his family and village to look for a way back to America. She has an idea where to start looking for him in the lower docks of Alzaria. Oh, we're... <laughs> <laughs> for all this trying to get away from Elzaria, here we are going right back. So I think we're going to be making a big giant circle just to get back there so we can go ahead and take care of that quest as well. We're going to move into our ship actions. I'm going to go back up to the bridge so I can remove all of our command from everybody uh, that we have, which is going to be able to remove six command. Now, of course, I get to gain three for going to the bridge, which is awesome. And then I get one card. Let's see what card I get. I have gotten... Well, just this. I can slot it for one to gain one of those. Eh, it's not bad. Let's go ahead and get rid of... No, I'm not getting rid of anything. <laughs> I think we're, actually, yeah, I think we're going to get rid of this one. I'm, I'm doing pretty good at being able to repair a ship. We can always go to a port. So I'm going to go ahead and put that there. That's the end of our ship action. Let's go ahead and check out our next event card. These are all terrible. Let's see it. Leoparoduna. I totally said it wrong. A shadow darkens the water below the ship. Outrun the creature. Craft six if I fail to ship damage. Or attack the creature. Strength seven. Fail four health and gain one meat. Oh my gosh. All right. So we have to figure out what we're going to do about that. Strength seven. I don't know how I'm going to deal with that. I got one, two, three, four, five. I can give myself five strength, which would pretty much take that no problem. Or a craft six. All I've used is Audrey and I got that no problem. Why don't we do that? We're going to do a craft, craft six. We don't get the meat then which is kind of nice, though we have quite a bit of food. But oh, more food is always better, isn't it? More food's always better. Let's go ahead and go for it. We're going to go ahead and use Kanan, which is going to give us three, which means all we have to pull is a four or better. Let's see if we can do that. Come on, four or better. Oh, we got a two. I don't have anything that's going to help with strength, though. Maybe I should have used the captain. We're going to go ahead, discard that card, use a command to go ahead and redraw fate. That's what we're going to do. Come on, I need a four or better. Let's go four or better. Oh, I got a three. That's not going to do it either. Three plus three is only six. We need seven. Oh, but maybe I can use this. This, I could use two command to give myself plus one to one of my fate draws. We're going to do that. That gives us up to seven. Now, sadly, I used a lot of command just to get through this. And all we got was a meat out of it. Oh, my gosh. That was not a good plan. I should have just took the, was it two damage? No, four health. Yeah, I should have totally taken four health instead of using all that command. That was a terrible idea. Well, that's it. We were able to do that. We have three command left, which isn't very much compared to what I'd want to have. And we're going to go ahead and do our two actions. Our first action is a move action because we're going to go to 98. And I don't even care what this card is. We're going to go right over here and we're going to check that out and gain one command. That's going to be awesome. Let's see what 98 is now that we have the quest card. We've been here before. You land at a wide staircase cut into the crispy, sun-colored rock. At the top, a shallow chamber gives respite from the sun's tireless wrath. Wrath, sorry. Though you step inside the trepidation, who made this place? And does anyone still live here? Last time we were here, we decided to take a rest and got bit by some sharks, <laughs> which we're not going to do this time because, look, we can use the petroglyph sketch to find the hidden door. It requires square, which we have on one of our quest cards. So let's go ahead and check out number 98.2. You stand in the entry chamber. To the left, a corridor leads into a dark room. To the right, there's a crumbling hole in the floor. Oh no, do I go to the corridor to the left or do I explore the hole in the floor? Perception 7. <laughs> Perception 7 is usually the one you want to do. You want to try to take the test, but I don't know. Maybe to the left, a dark corridor. Wow, dark corridor is never really good. Well, let's go ahead and try the Perception 7. I'm not going to do anything. We're just going to draw a card and see what happens. If I take 5 health, I don't think it's going to be the end of the world. Let's go ahead and see what happens. We've got 4. And I could actually, nope, that's about all I could do. I could spend 2 command to give myself 3 more Perception, but I think instead I'm just going to go ahead and take the 5 damage. And then we're going to move to 109. Raphael, also known as the Human Damage Sponge, is going to take all five damage. Within the chamber are a few broken jars and statues, but nothing interests you until you notice the cobbled floor is an intricate mosaic. 
Kasumi lights up her lamp and makes a sketch before returning to the chamber. You gain adventure card 53, sketch of the floor. At this point, I could take the corridor to the left, which we were debating about last time, or we can return to the ship. Well, now we're definitely gonna take the corridor to the left. Let's go ahead and check out adventure card 53. It is right here. Sketch, this is a sketch of the floor pattern. Okay, so let's remember that pattern. Maybe we'll need it. I don't know, we'll find out. Your torch reveals a geometric carving on the walls and in the center of the floor. A stone disc with a pointer like an ancient clock around the edge of the disc. There are symbols of a flame fish and an egg. The dial is loose and with some effort you could turn it so that it pointed at one of the symbols. Point the dial at the flame, point the dial at the fish, point the dial at the egg, or return to the chamber. Or do we look at this and maybe this helps us? I don't see how it's going to help us. If anybody can figure that out, if that's actually what's supposed to help us, that would be awesome. But I sadly, you're not here to tell me. I don't think this is going to help us at this point. This might be used for something else. I'm not exactly sure, but I don't see anything about a. Well, this is kind of looks like a disc, but I don't see anything resemble any type of flame fish or a, uh, what do you call it, a egg. So, wow. So I'm just going to take a one and three shot here. I don't know what to point the thing at. Oh, man. My guess is the flame might damage us. The fish might give us food. The egg, I'm not too sure about. The egg might give us something too. It's really tough. I don't even know. Oh, this is so heartbreaking. All right. Um, let's, let's try the flame. Why not? <laughs> this is probably going to end badly. You turn the dial to the symbol of the flame. Rusty spikes shoot up from the floor, stabbing that crew member is unfortunately enough to be in the way. <laughs> we lose five health. I knew something like that was going to happen, but that's okay. Now, at least now we know. I'm going to go ahead and give this five damage to our doctor, Gregory. He also has six health, so he's okay. I'm going to go back and try to turn a different dial. The flame was bad. Let's go ahead and try the egg, because I think this one's just going to give us food. So let's see what the egg does at 105. A hole opens in the ceiling and a dozen of rat-sized black scorpions drop into the chamber. Oh my gosh, it's like a nightmare. It says smash the scorpion strength six. Oh, okay. <laughs> this isn't the right one either. I'm going to go ahead and give Kanan another token, which means he's going to go ahead and take this negative one to his attack, of course. We're going to go ahead and see if we can get a strength six. He's already gets plus three to this. Let's go ahead and draw our card. And we got, I turned it the right way, a four. So we were able to succeed, so we don't have to worry about taking the venom. I wasn't too worried about the three health, but that venom token, every turn that whoever has the venom token takes one damage. Yuck. All right, well, we only got one left. Let's go turn that one. There's only one left to turn, and it brings us to 93. A hidden door opens, revealing a deep chasm. Of course, the hidden door is behind the fish. At a far edge of the chasm, you make out a passage lined with statues. There's no way across, Audrey asks, over, peering over the edge. We'll have to jump over the chasm, says Kasumi. Or fashion a bridge, Mac offers. At this point, I could go ahead and make a bridge to cross the chasm with a craft seven. If I fail, I gain one low morale, negative four. The first bridge you make breaks, sending one of the crewmen slamming into the chasm wall at the last second. You grab them before they fall to the abyss. All right, let's not do that. Let's maybe check out the other one. The other option is to jump across strength six, fail seven health. So that's more health. And it says using rope as a safety, you let the crew jump across one by one, but too many of them cannot make it and they fall hard against the wall of the chasm before using their safety rope to scrap their way back up. Okay, I lied, we're doing craft seven. I'm gonna go ahead and use Audrey. Audrey already has three crafting already because of this. So we're just gonna go ahead and draw a card. I have to have a craft seven skill. Let's go ahead and hold decks upside down. And we're gonna go ahead and get seven, that's fantastic. So we were able to make it across that chasm. We're going to go to 93.1. Both of them sent us to the same place. So let's go ahead and read what it says. A stone cow sits proudly surrounded by tiny rays of sunlight that spill through the cracks in the walls. A few trinkets rest in an offering bowl near the cow's mouth. I don't think we should take any of that, Audrey followed, frowning. I don't think he'll mind, says Raphael, chuckling. Among the offerings, you find a clay tablet covered in unfamiliar markings. I'm going to gain six coins and three experience points. I'm going to be able to complete quest number 38, which is our square. So we're going to go ahead and put that in our completed quest box. And we're going to gain quest number 39. And then we'll be returning to the ship. 
The new quest we got is tablet. It says, in the temple of the square, we found a tablet covered in strange markings. Max says that she saw similar markings on the walls in Eye of the Rock. Okay, I know where that is. That's a town. We're going to go, we'll probably be going back to that town pretty soon. We also are going to gain a whole bunch of other stuff too. I think some coins and some experience. So we get six of them and we also get three experience points. So let's go ahead and grab our six coins and then let's move into our next ship action. We're going to move back down to the quarters to grab our three command because three commands awesome and remove the two that is on Mac. We're then get to draw a card. Let's see what we got. We have received a rapid strike with a six. We're putting that back in the deck. I don't want that to be on my guys over here. We're going to go ahead now and check out our next card. We only have one left, and then we're going to have to deal with the next set of adventure. What's this? Infested food. The crew is growing sick. Ignore the crew's complaints and gain one weakened. Ugh. Find the infested food, savvy six. If I lose negative one health and lose two food. Oh, I don't want to lose two food. That's terrible. We used to have a ton of it. And I'm kind of getting a little low here. Let's go ahead and try a savvy six. I'm just going to draw a card because we do have that plus two savvy card. So maybe that'll be enough. Let's see what we found. Oh, we got a six. That's awesome. Back to back sixes. You can't go wrong with that. We're going to go ahead and not lose anything and get rid of this card. That's awesome. At this point, I am going to use one of my command to go ahead and make our food here, which is going to take off four command. Since we have Kanan with one of these tokens, I don't want him to have that. We're going to remove another one from the captain and one from Audrey, and we're also going to remove the other one from Kanan as well. We also get to remove five damage. We're going to remove the five damage straight off of Gregory, meaning that Raphael still has five health on him, which is damage, I mean, which is okay. And we still have one fatigue on Kasumi, and we also have one on Laurent, which is okay as well. Actually, I think I'm going to keep the one. Nope, we're fine. We're going to do it that way. Then I think I might go ahead. Oh, I have to use the food. We're going to use two meat and we're going to use one of our grain, which is fine. Then I'm going to go ahead and make a mixed vegetables here. We're going to go ahead and remove one or use one command for this, which means I'm going to use a carrot. Let's go ahead and use a carrot. We're going to use this carrot to go ahead and remove one fatigue and two damage from somebody. At this point, I'm going to remove this one from Laurent. And of course, our wonderful... <laughs> Damage dealing taking sponge Raphael is at three health now. He was able to get rid of the five. We've healed two. So that is our healing for this turn, which is just fine. We've got some food. We may need to find some more, but we're going to go on an adventure. We've been, we're going into our two actions now, and I wonder if there's anything else I want to do before we do that. We've got a lot of command that I haven't really done anything with, but that's okay. We're going to move into our next set of actions. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to try to get down to that Eye of the Rock because I have that quest for it. It says that we have to go ahead and Mac remembers something about the Eye of the Rock. So we're going to go ahead and just do a move action, but I'm going to go ahead and give a fatigue to Audrey to do it because I'm going to get a whole ton of extra for this. We got a three plus three is six, and then she gets two more, seven, eight. Oh, that's not quite nine, but eight is still enough to move three, one, two, and three. This isn't one space, remember? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to go ahead and check. Oh, I do have to do this Savvy 5. I'm just going to take the test. I'm not too worried about it. We got a 4 which means we're going to go ahead and take one ship damage. And let's see where that ship damage falls. It falls in number four. So we're going to take one damage to our galley, which isn't the end of the world. And since we're here, we're going to go to number 90. And to do that, we're going to go ahead and gain a command from our engaged card. We are at Eye of Rock. We don't have poison, and I don't think we've been to Eye of Rock. The pier juts out of the cliffside, covered in holes the size of houses, some blocked with sun-bleached plank doors or crocked shutters, other piled with stacks of crates. A woman in a straw hat calls out to you, I hope you haven't come empty-handed. She shifts her straw hat and looks you over for valuables. We have five options. The fifth one is leave, which I don't even have it on the camera because I'm not going to do that. It says visit a trade office, pay one coin, visit the local scholar's house, pay one food, or talk to the locals, or compare the square tablet with the markings on the wall. Keyword tablet, savvy 10. Gain one low morale and turn to 90. So if we don't make this, we have to actually come back to this and try it again. Or if we make it, we get to turn it to 83. So we have to make this test. So I'm going to go ahead and give some tokens out. We're going to give one to Laurent. We're also going to give one to Mac, which is going to give us four to this test, which means we only need to pull a six, which is still pretty terrible. So I'm actually going to give one to Kasumi. Kasumi is in, as well. She's going to take one. And there I've gone ahead and given us two, four, six, savvy. Hopefully that's enough. Let's see if we're able to pass our test. Six, 
seven, eight, nine, ten. That is enough. We were able to pass our savvy test. So let's go ahead and turn to number 83. This is a symbol on each wall tile. You compare them with the tablet and find that one symbol is missing. When no one is looking, you break through that tile and reach inside. The smell of rot spews out at you, but you fumble around until you find a small stone. Gain weekend, oh yuck, and adventure card 23. Oh, it's a totem, Thrax Charm. And we complete quest number 39. So we're gonna go ahead and put this away and we're gonna return to number 90. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to take the weakened token, and then I'm just going to go ahead and use this power right here and get rid of the weakened token because I don't want to deal with the weakened token. We did get a new totem. It is able to, de to give us four defense. We gain a fatigue when we use it. That's not too bad if you need to keep some people alive. So we're going to put that with the rest of our totems. I think we're up to five, which is pretty good. Now let's go back to 90. We have three options left. We can either visit the trade office by paying a coin. We can visit the local scholar's house by paying a food or just talk to the locals. Let's stop and start at the top. Usually in this situation, they allow us to do all the different actions. So I'm just gonna start at the top by paying one coin to visit 90.1. We sent the trade ship Eagle Shell to do some business just to the east, but they should have returned by now, says the Lucran woman at the counter piled with stacks of paper. We can pay you if you find out what happened to them. Gain quest 43, and just like I thought, we're going to return back to 90. We're going to go ahead and gain our quest. It says trade ship missing. There's a reward for us if we can find out what happened to the trade ship that went missing just east of Eye of the Rocks. We'll have to check that out. It has keyword eggshell. But before we do that, of course, we're going to continue by visiting the local scholar's house by paying one food and going to 90.2. It said the god Valdar has only four toes on each foot after he lost two toes in the battle against the great hero Rathold. The scholar leans in and whispers, One of the pilgrims told me that he found four-toed footprints on the e island to the east. So I'm going to gain quest 44. It's right here. Valdar's footprints. Valard's footprints. I probably pronounced them totally wrong. The scholar at EI of the Rock told us that a four-toed footprints of a god Val Valard was recently found on the island to the east. So let's go ahead and check that one out as well. Footprints. Then we only have one left to go after turning back to 90, so we're just going to go straight to that one. 90.3 says, A gray-skinned hunter bends your ear. In a cave to the west of pig's ribs, there's a statue of a headless cat, and in its neck is a keyhole. I've been looking for that damn cat head ever since. Well, when we first came up here, we didn't have any quests. Now we've got a million, so we're going to have a whole ton of fun for the rest of the game, trying to find out where all these places are. Now we only have two command... Oh, we have four. We have four command out there. We're going to go ahead and go back up to the bridge so we can get rid of all that command and gain back three command here, and that'll be the way we start with our thing. Oh, I get a card. I always almost forget to get a card. Let's see what card we got. We got triage. Each time a fatigue is removed from the crew members, restore one health to another crew member. Ah, nah, no. We're going to go ahead and put that back. We're going to go ahead now and draw our last card. Now, when we come back here, we're going to do a ship action, and then we're going to have to take on the second time. We're going to read story 1.2, it says. But first, we have to deal with this. It is the rain of fire. Oh, wow. It's like a burning ring of fire. Flaming meteors from the heavens rain down upon the sea. Avoid the meteors, perception nine, or take four ship damage. Oh, boy. We don't want to take four ship damage. That's a lot of damage. I think fatigue is better than that. We're going to go ahead and divvy it out. Sadly, I only got one person that's really going to be able to take some of this, and that's Laurent, which is going to be plus two, which means I still need to get a seven. And I have a total of three I can gain from command tokens, so we're going to have to add some more. So we're going to give people that only have one out there. I'm going to give one to the captain, and I'm also going to give... Oh, that's it. I can only give one to the... Oh, I can get... Wow, our guys have a, all the people that have a ton of tokens on them. I think we're just going to give one to the captain. We're going to see how this goes. One, two, three. I get plus three to this flip. Let's see how we do. Three plus four. That's five. I need... So that's eight. So I only need to get one more. We're going to go ahead and use her. I'm going to go ahead and gain... Put one of our command on there. And we can gain one. So that's five, six, seven, eight, nine. We did make it with a perception nine. So that's... Oh, that's... Thank goodness. Four ship damage. That's terrible. We're going to go ahead and discard that and move into our two actions.
And at this point, we are going to eat again. I'm going to go ahead and remove and put a command on here to remove a meat, a vegetable, and a food. We're running out of food. Wow, I can't believe I'm saying that. We're going to go ahead and remove this, but that does get to give a, rid of four fatigue. We're going to get rid of the two that are impeding our damage abilities from two of our characters. Then I am going to remove the one from the captain because she just has so much she can do. And I think we're going to move the other one from... Oh, should I get rid of Audrey's? I think we're going to get rid of Audrey's. Audrey's going to go ahead and remove her fatigue as well, just in case I need to get that ship moving. Oh, actually, I don't even have to worry about that. Why did I? I totally forgot. I've got a card that allows me to move my ship like crazy. I totally forgot about this card. I can move three ship distances just by putting that on there. I have to... We're going to keep that on Audrey. I don't need to worry about that. We're going to go ahead and take the other one off Laurent. He's going to go ahead and remove that. I also get to remove five damage. We only have three out there, so I'm just going to go ahead and remove that from Raphael, and that's it. Now we're going to go ahead and take our two ship actions, but of course, look at this. I only got one food left, which I can remedy that situation. I do have the ability to gain some food if I want to, but for now, we're fine. Let's go do our actions. In our plethora of quests that we have, we have two. I probably have more quests here than Mel Guapo has piñatas. If you don't know that reference, go check out the <laughs> Three Amigos. It's an amazing movie. The scholar at the Eye of the Rock has gone to tell us to go to the island to the east, and this one also says east of, of, what is it, Eye of Rock. So my guess is it's right over here. So I'm going to go ahead and move over here, but I'm going to use our card this time. I'm not going to be dumb. We're going to use our card, which means I'm not actually using a action to move our ship. And we're going to, I think I might check out both of these, though I'm guessing it's going to be up in this area. I highly doubt it's going to be that one. With my luck, there's going to be another barnacle that sticks to our ship. And we're going to go ahead and check out. I think we're going to start with 83, which means we're going to go ahead and gain a command by checking this number out. A lonely dock stands piled with empty cages, towers of captive awaiting their prisoners. From a lean-to nearby, a woman emerges, her head wrapped in a bright red bandana. I made this one for a dinosaur hunter, she says, pointing to a cage the size of two-story building. But he hasn't come back to get it. Perhaps you could deliver it for me. I'll tell you where to go. Gain one material and quest 46. So I'm going to go ahead and put this with our stuff. And then I get quest number 46, which is Mezo Mesozoic, Dinosaur Hunters. We are delivering a cage to a man hunting dinosaurs in the southern coastline of an island to the west. All right, so now we're on the, going the other way too. More quests. That was our first action. I think for our second action, I, oh, do we really move or do I use my Lucran engine to travel two distances? I could go one, two, but I don't really want to go up there. I think I'm just going to move. I'm going to move one space. We're going to go, yep, one space. Right up to here, and I have to take a five or take two ship damage. Oh, I don't want to take the two ship damage. I think we're just going to pull the card and see what happens. Oh, we got a three. That's terrible. Okay, I don't have any way to negate that. Unless I want to draw another card. I'm not going to. We're just going to take two ship damage. And it's going to be in one and three. So we've lost our hull and our sick bay. We can't use our sick bay anymore. And that's our two actions. We're going to go ahead and move into our next turn. For our ship action, we're going to move again right back over to our quarters so that we can get our three command and go ahead and draw a card. Here we have three command and we're going to draw a card. I've gotten special request. When you cook a recipe, you also restore one health. Well, that's not bad. But now before we go ahead and move into this, I am going to slot some of these cards. I'm going to pay three command to slot three cards here. I'm going to go ahead and give alert and Jack of all trades out to our crew. Captain Odessa is gonna take Jack of all trades. Now that's the most you can ever have on a person is what you see there. I also get to hand this one out as well. I think we're gonna give this one to Kanan. Kanan is gonna go ahead and take that one. That's it, we're gonna go ahead now and read 1.2. On a blood-red horizon, the silhouette of a ship appears. It approaches quick and angry, and soon you hear the battle roar of its crew, a mass of creatures with bull heads and eyes like embers. The Mythians have found you! Your ship shudders as they leap onto the deck. An armored Mythian lunges over the gunwale. For his four arms wield a rusty pike, a curved saber, a trident, and a flail. How oh, he's armed to the max! He stands at twice the height of the others, who await his orders while brandishing myriad weapons of cruelty. The giant Mythian flares his nostrils and snorts at you. You will not awaken Orphish. We will kill you and drop your bones into the deepest abyss. 
all right, we have some options. We can one, fight the Mythians, or B, ask why they don't want the god to be awakened. We are going to fight the Mythians. <laughs> just bam, let's just take these guys out. So at this point, we're just going to go ahead and shuffle these up a little bit. A little truffle shuffle here and place them down. One, two, three, and four. There we go. We've got a bunch of Mythians here, these bullheaded creatures. We've got a crusher. We've got a brute. We've got a guard. And we've got a Mythian chief. We've got a level six, three, three, and five. All right. And they don't look too tough, I don't think. This guy's got a lot of health. But other than that, I think we're going to be okay. Let's go ahead and take our two command because our captain has an ability to give us two command. We go ahead and put all our command right here so we can use it if we need to. We might. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully we can just take these guys out pretty good. We also get our four actions during combat. I'm going to place those right up here and we're going to go ahead and begin our combat. We're going to start the battle off by using Laurent. Laurent is going to go ahead and use his twin daggers. He can go ahead and do that. We're going to draw a card. I get plus four. We're going to go ahead and attack this Mythian Brute. This will do three damage, which would be enough to take this guy out. We got a four. Plus four is eight. That's enough. We did three damage to this guy. This guy will be dead. I will be covering this token so I can pass this over to another crew member if I want. I'm going to pass it over to Kanan. We're going to go ahead and remove that guy. That guy got rocked in the first turn. He is going to take one of our command to or attack tokens, I guess you could say. Next, we have Kanan. Kanan is going to come out. He does have his crack shot, which gives him plus two to his pistol. His pistol is a plus one normally, so I have a three. We're then going to go ahead and... What else do I have here that I can help? I got my double shot and my alert cards. So let's go ahead and draw our card. We're going to go ahead and attack our Mythian guard and see how we do. We got a five, which is way more than enough to hit this guy. We're going to give him a command token. We're going to use this, and he's going to do three, four damage. Again, destroying this guy, and I get to pass my token to somebody. I'm going to pass mine to the captain. That's going to be my plan. We're going to go ahead and move Kanan off of the attack board, and we're going to bring in our next fighter. Our next fighter is going to be the captain, and she is loaded here. She's got lots of stuff going on. She's got surprise attack, jack of all trades, and then these two aren't going to actually affect her battle. So this is what I got for battle. She gets plus one to her attack. She's going to go ahead and attack. I think she's going to go after the Mythian chief. That's going to be her plan. She's going to try to hit a six. So she needs a five or better. Let's see how this goes. We're going to go ahead and reveal our card. We got a five. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> I didn't expect that to happen. I thought I was going to be using some cards. But no, we were able to do that. That's awesome. We're going to go ahead and you know, I do what? Do one, four, five. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. I need to do six damage. So I'm going to go ahead and put a command on this, giving myself two more damage. So that's six. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. This guy is dead. I do get to transfer my token if I wish to, and why not? We'll give our token to, oh, let's figure out who we're going to give this to. We'll give this token to Laurent. I don't know if we're actually going to use it. That's our first action with her. She's going to go ahead and attack again. She's going to go ahead and attack this Mythian Crusher. Again, she needs a five or better. Let's see how we do. We got, oh, we got a one. That's terrible. All right, I think at this point, I'm going to use Kasumi's ability to go ahead and let us redraw ones. So let's see if we get this time. We got a two. That's even worse. Two. I'm going to go ahead and discard this three, four. And then she gets five here, and then she can get plus from one of our items out here. She can gain plus two from this right here. And again, oh my gosh, I totally keep forgetting about this. It's like the greatest artifact of all time, or, or totem, I mean. And I never remember to use this. I should be using it almost every time. Look at this command again I piled up. All right, we're going to go ahead and use that to give us a total of six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We got a total of seven. I have to discard this. At any time, I can, during combat challenge, I can discard it to give plus two. So I've gone ahead, this thing's discarded too. I'm going to do four. I'm going to discard this for five. Then I'm going to go ahead and use this to go ahead and remove one from something. I'm going to remove it from our horn, which then I'm going to go ahead and place it right back down on top of the horn to do a whole ton of damage here. Four, five, six, seven damage. Oh my gosh, this guy just got totally wrecked. One, two, three, four, five, six, oh, wait a minute, I'm going to be wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six, there we go, seven, just like that. Now, she is going to take a counterattack of three. She's got a defense of two, so she's only, or one, I mean, she's going to take two damage. Oh, I just realized I could have used this token. I'm going to use this token, actually, instead of putting the one on Kasumi. I forgot about the token that she got, so I'm going to go ahead and give that back to Kanan. That's the end of our actions. We have gone ahead and taken 
our four combat actions against the Mythians that didn't stand a chance against us, really. Check this guy out. He's on the, she almost wiped out their entire group. She's going to go back up there. Well, she might not go too far. She might come back and do that same attack again. So we're going to actually, maybe not. She's only got, uh, she doesn't have much when it comes to accuracy, and I've used a lot of my accuracy abilities. So I don't really have any left to actually, oh, I do. I do have one more that can give me plus two. So we're going to leave her right here because she's probably going to be the next to attack. I am going to take three damage. So I'm going to go ahead and place this on, hmm, who should I place it on? I could place it on Gregory. Oh, no way. We got Raphael who has absolutely nothing. We're just going to, so he's going to be our <laughs> damage sponge. He took three damage. All right. We're moving into our next attack. I'm going to go ahead and use her again. Let's go ahead and see what she gets. She got a three, four, five, six, because I can go ahead and use my Lucrin goggles to give myself plus two, that's six. We have hit this guy and did four damage. He is dead as well. Thank you for playing Mythian Raiders. You were sadly not too much of a standoff. We were able to wipe them out pretty efficiently and I still have two more command left going in to our next set of action cards. The remaining Mythians grunt in defeat and return to their ship, sailing into the darkness. Ha, <laughs> poor Mythians. Make a new event deck. So this is very similar to what we did last time. We're going to draw all of their cards again. We're also going to discard all the cards we have with the blue on the back from our decks and that are on our characters. We get to keep the one in our hand, which is we only have one left in our hand, but that's okay. We're going to leave that in our hand, and we're just going to go ahead and create our last set of event cards, which is going to be 18 we're going to place those back at the same board, and then we're going to go ahead and continue the game. We're going to continue looking for our two quest locations. I'm going to move up into this location with our first action. So we're just going to go ahead and flip our card. we got a two and move one square. Totally fine. Now we're going to take two ship damage from this. And right now I'm at two, four, five, six hull from being destroyed. I think that's okay because, again, I think we're going to be potentially moving up here to this and be able to hopefully heal our ship, or should I actually work on this and try to help? I think it's best to try to help the ship. Okay, we're going to go ahead and use Kanan, I think, to go ahead and help the ship. He's got two uh, strength, so he needs to pull a three or better, and he got four! Yes! Okay, so we didn't take any damage. Oh, I'm glad we used him. All right, so we don't lose any ship damage. We're going to check out 176. Now, sadly, I don't have that engaged card anymore, so I'm not going to gain any more command. So let's go check that out. And we have found one of the things. It says if Keyword footprint turned to 176.1. Yes. 176.1 states, you search the sands for it four toed footprints of Vallard inside the giant skull of what must have been a titanic monster in life. You find the imprint deep in the dried mud. Four toe marks in each step. You follow the trail through the skull, past the spinal cord, and out into the desert. For miles, you trudge through the stone-riddled sand until at last you reach an ancient pedestal embedded with a, it is a massive hammer made of stone. Oh, Thor, where are you? Look, I can remove a hammer by force. I don't have this. Am, am I worthy? We'll find out. I need to do a strength eight check. Oh, boy. Let's see if we can do this. I'm going to go ahead and use Captain. The Captain is going to give me plus two to this. I'm then going to go ahead, and I think we're going to use Kanan. I'm going to go ahead and flip that token. Give us another two sets. Four. We have plus four to this. Let's see if we're able to make it. Come on. Let's go. Yes, we did. We got a five plus four is nine. We were worthy. It doesn't say anything about worthy. I just like saying that. It says turn to 176.2. Of course, I could have left if I wanted to. Eh, not happening. With a roar, you wrench the hammer from the pedestal, holding it above your head in the scorching sunlight. You gain two coins, two XP, and adventure card 26, the Titan Hammer. We have completed quest 44, and we're going to return to the ship. We have gained the Titan Hammer. Check this thing out. Plus two accuracy, four damage, and even has one defense. I get plus one accuracy versus imps and demons. Oh my gosh, I'm going to put it on her. She's the only one that doesn't have a good weapon, and oh my gosh, she just got a super upgrade. I'm also going to get two gold, and I also gain two experience, brings in our experience total up to seven. Those were our two actions, so I'm going to go ahead and move back to the bridge to remove all of the command from the board and from our characters. We need to do that because we had a lot of it out there. I'm going to gain three going to the bridge, and I'm going to go ahead and draw a card. And we have got, what's this? When you when this crew member is at full health, I get plus one. Oh, focus mind. That's actually pretty good. I might slot that on somebody at some point. I always say that. I never do. But that's okay. We're done our action up the in the ship. Let's go ahead and draw our nice card. These are happy cards. This one says, Alzarian Traders. A narrow ship approaches. I can trade. I can trade up to two materials for one coin or raid their ship. Gain one low morale and a grain. 
or bid farewell. <laughs> oh no, I want to raid the ship. I want to raid the ship. I don't, or two materials for one coin. Let's do that. You can trade up to two materials for one coin each. Oh, I think that's a good idea. Two materials for one coin each. I could go ahead and gain a couple materials for the coin we have, which, well, I guess that's actually not a big deal because I'm going to use the coins at the, tr at the point anywhere where I'm going to go ahead and actually, it's either one coin to fix your ship or I use these to fix my ship. It's the same thing. So I don't see why we don't raid the ship. Let's get a low morale token and a green because we're running out of food for some real reason. I'm going to take a green and a low morale token. Sorry, all freighters. And I'm going to go ahead and use one of my command on my captain to just get rid of that token right away. So we basically use the command to gain a green, which isn't the end of the world. It's actually a pretty good deal. All right, let's go to our two actions. The next place I want to check out is one 89 and I need to get a four better to get there now I'm just gonna draw a card and hope for the best if we don't we can just go back to blood rock on our turn and Maybe use the port action to heal our ship, but if we make it we can get all the way over here That'd be awesome. Let's go ahead and see what we get we got we got a five Okay, so we get our two one two we get to move right up there to 189. Let's go ahead and check it out 189 says if keyword deck I don't have that so apparently went to the wrong place it says you explore red sand dunes and find a case of whiskey half buried in the ground Tiny scorpions sting you as you dig it out. Oh, barf, gain one. Oh, venom token, that's terrible. And adventure card 54. Then I return to the ship. So here's a story about a man named Gregory. He's going to go ahead and take the venom token. I'm going to go ahead and use two command to get rid of the venom token. That is that symbol right there. And I get my case of whiskey, where I can use one command to get rid of low morale, which is kind of funny because that's what the captain can do anyway. So that was a total waste of time. Those were our two actions. We're going to move back into our ship and go to the quarters. That way I can remove two from a certain person. I think we're going to go ahead and just remove the two. We're going to move one from her and one from Gregory. That's the only three we have out on the board. I'm going to go ahead and grab my three command. I'm going to grab my card and we're going to see what we get. We have found discard this equipped card to gain plus three. Oh, it's a five though. I'm not, oh, I get to keep it because I've got it's only two cards. I've got three cards now. All right, we're going to go ahead now and check out this. Let's see what happens. Hopefully something nice and happy. Rough breakup. Oh, the two crew members that were previously in a close relationship are now enemies. Oh, that's terrible. Soothing things over. Cunning six. Negative four health split as evenly as possible on two crew members or let them work it out. Choose two crew members. Each one gains one low morale. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm just going to have them gain one low morale each, and that's just totally fine because I'm going to take two command, put it right on here, and there, our card is appeased. I'm going to remove the two low morale tokens. Totally awesome. That's the end. We're going to go into our two actions, and I wish I had more food. We still have eggshell that I want to deal with, and of course it says that it went missing east of Eye of Rock. So that means the only places it could be well, it could be here, 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 or here. We've checked these two out. Eh, not there. I'm actually going to swing back down here. I'm going to guess it went right here. That's my guess. We're going to go ahead and just barrel on through one, two, three, four. I need to get four or better in order to get there in one shot. So I need the nine plus. So at this point, I am going to give a morale or a fatigue token to Audrey, who then has plus two to this. So now I'm still needing to get a seven. So I'm going to try to find somebody else who has good craft. And I think it's going to be, oh, I don't know. I'm going to give one to Marco. He hasn't had anything to do in a while. And I'm also going to give one of these to Raphael. Raphael hasn't done a lot in a while either. So now we have a total of four. So let's go ahead and flip our card and see what we get. We got a two. Oh, that's terrible. So we have four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I missed it by one. Really? All right. We're going to go ahead and draw another card. We're going to go ahead and use our gear to draw a card. That was ridiculous. Really? We missed it by that. One, two, three. Yes, our rock wouldn't have got us there. We got a one. Oh, man. That's terrible, too. I'm going to use Kazumi, Kazumi to go ahead and redraw our ones. And we've drawn a four. That's enough. Wow, I used all my command. I have no command left. One, two, three, four. I get to ignore both of these because we got a nine or better. And because of her card here, it says, of course, that I can ignore hazards, which is awesome. So I let's just make sure we got this right. I have four total. Plus four is eight. And I get plus two because of that card. So nine, ten. So we're going to go ahead and discard that card. That was a lot of just to get over here. Go all the way over here and check out number 82. I was right. If keyword eggshell turn to 82.11. Hot winds churn the sea's surface as you sail along a sandy coastline. Ahead, a double-masted vessel sits quietly near the surf. 
and you make out the image of a cracked egg on the hull. The eggshell! A lanky Lucran sailor emerges from below deck. You came from Eye of the Rock? He says, waving, a, waving you aboard. Captain and the rest of the crew went ashore. They left me here to keep watch. Didn't tell me what they were delivering. It was supposed to be a short trip, but they've been gone for days. At this step, we can go ahead and search for the trail and follow it into the desert with Perception 7, or convince the Lucran to guide you into the desert. I think we're going to do the Perception because I've got more of that than I do of this cunning. And a lot of my guys have a ton of fatigue on, so there's not a lot of people I can use for this test. We're going to go ahead, try Perception, and we're going to use... We're going to go ahead and use, uh, what's his name, Laurent. Laurent has none on there, so I'm going to gain two from him. And I think that's going to be it. I need to get a Perception 7. Oh, I don't have any more. Oh, I'm going to have to pass this out. We're going to go ahead and give this to Mac. And we're going to give one to the captain as well. I think that's really odd. Oh, I can give one to Kasumi. Let's go ahead and give one to Kasumi. All of our guys have a ton of fatigue on them. We're going to have to get back to the port after this. Which is good because we're right at Eye of the Rock. So at this point, I have one. Two from him, three, four, five. I get plus five to this. So if I draw anything but a one, I'm good. Oh no, I drew a one. <laughs> oh, I got a six. I used all that fatigue and for nothing. All right, I'm gonna have to take three health and I'm gonna gain a venom token. And this time I can't get rid of that venom token. So we're just gonna go ahead and drop this on somebody. Ah, this is absolutely terrible. I think we are still gonna give this to Gregory. He's gonna gain a venom token and I'm gonna drop three damage on to Raphael. Raphael's gonna take three damage. He's up to six. Oh, I drew a one. I can't believe it. Oh, that's terrible. But we do get to still go to 82.1. A few miles into the dunes, you find the thrashed remains of a campsite. Tents torn to shreds, boxes of tools and supplies spilled out all over the sand. Not one person remains. You gather a few of the supplies. So we're gonna go ahead and gain one material and one gold and move to 82.3. The tattered campsite puts the crew on edge, their minds filled with gruesome imaginations of the attack. Near the edge of the shredded tent, you find a large three-toed footprint. Further on, white breast crows peck at something stuck in the sand. You realize it's a mule. It's wearing its harness and mostly stripped of the packages it was carrying. The poor creature is still alive, shaking its head and baying pathetically at the birds. At this point, I can try to save the mule and help it out of the sand, where I'm going to gain a three health and a weakened token because I have to do a strength aid and I really don't have anybody else left that can do anything. Well, maybe we do. We have a few people that can probably do some tests here. We're going to go ahead and start passing out some more tokens. This is going to be awesome. I am going to go for the strength eight because I don't want to just leave the mule to let and die. We're going to give one of these to uh, our Gregory. He doesn't have any fatigue on him right now. So that's one. I'm going to give Raphael one. He's going to go ahead and take this. So he is going to help with two. Next, I'm going to give the captain one again. She has an ability that allows her to take three fatigue tokens. So that's one, two, three, four. I'm at four. Should I just token everybody up? We might as well. Hopefully there's no other test to take or we're just going to have to eat it. We're going to go ahead and give this one to our cook. That gives us a total of one, two, three, four, five to this. I need to get a three or better on this draw. Let's see how we do. We got a six. I overdid it, but that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and turn to 82.4. You chase off the crows and pull the poor mule from its sandy prison. I gain one experience point and I get adventure card eight. Freddy the mule, here he is. Here is Freddy the mule. I can use one command to gain two strength. Oh, it's about time I find something with strength. The only thing we're lacking actually is going to be cunning. If we can find a card that aids us in cunning, all of the skills that we have would be fantastic. Now, of course, we still have to continue to 84.6. If it's another skill check, we're in big trouble. A white hot wind throws sand in your eyes and hair. You long for the sea spray after a day in this hellish place. The sky burns with a fiery sunset, but by the time you reach the trail's end, a rock cove filled with a pile of huge bones, the stink of rotting meat hangs in the air. Next to a pile of dead flesh stands a hulking lizard with two triangular horns just above its eyes. It rips the bloody carcass with its mouth of long teeth, eating quietly. 
content to slowly strip the meat from some poor creature's bones. Now you'll notice I'm at 82.6 and it actually told me to turn to 84.6. There was a typo in the actual rules and this is cleared up in the FAQ that you are supposed to go to 82.6. While this gruesome scene holds your attention, Max spies a few ragged figures hiding behind a rock. You crawl to them. It's the crew of the Lucan traders. We were delivering cargo to some trappers when this monster attacked us. It ate one of our crew right in front of us and trapped the other in a pile of bones. Some of them are injured, and there's another lizard nearby as well. All right, let's see what happens. We can choose to fight the monsters at a level 17 combat, or we can go ahead and do a Perception 10, fail, and I take 6 health and 2 weakened. The bones are sharp. As you free the trapped Lucrans, the pile falls down like a house of cards. And your crew is lacerated and bruised, but they make it out alive. Okay, let me show you my guys. If you look at our characters, you're going to notice that we're in bad shape right now. Our characters all have pretty good weapons, but all these negative one tokens out here mean these characters are going to be doing one less damage when they actually make an attack, which is pretty much everybody but him and him. So I don't know if actually fighting is a great idea, not to mention I have absolutely no command to help us out. Now if we do it do in a combat, she's going to give me two, but I think we're just going to go ahead and fail that test, gain two weakened tokens, and go ahead and take all that damage. The captain's gonna go ahead and take two, and Gregory's gonna take the other four. Then I also have to give two people a weakened status, which is absolutely terrible because it's hard to get rid of. But we're gonna go ahead and I think it's gonna be, it basically gives us negative two to all of our skill checks, which we don't really like, but that's what it is. We're gonna give one to him because we don't use him very much for skill checks. And I actually think we're gonna give the other one to Gregory because we don't use him very much for skill checks either. Oh no, we're gonna give it to this guy. He doesn't get used for skill checks at all. At first, your daring operation goes well enough. The giant lizard, distracted with his meaty supper, doesn't notice you. You sneak survivors one by one away from the bone pile like chickens escaping a butcher's cage. But sudden shriek ends your heart racing. The titanic lizard has caught sight of the escape operation and leaves his half-eaten meal in a frenzy. As you flee for your lives, the lizard takes a few more victims. There's nothing you can do to save them. Back at shore, a devastated Lucran captain grasps your hand in thanks despite the losses. Gain one low morale token. I get five coins and three experience points. That's not too bad. So we're going to go ahead and put our coins with our other stuff. And then I do get three experience points, bringing our total up to three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We have eleven experience points, which is pretty good. We also completed quest 43. So I'm going to go ahead. Well, did we really? We got a lot of people dead. We're going to go ahead and remove that. And to reading here, it says one of the traitors approaches you, a red haired young woman with shining eyes. I can't believe you idiots came out here to save us, she says in a Chicago accent. I don't know if that was a Chicago accent. My name's Moria, and I can see you're not from around here. I'm from the Midwest myself. Mind if I join you? I've had enough of this place, and I might know where to find a totem if that's what you're after. Invite Moria to join you or decline her offer. Why would you decline this? 82.9. I just want to get back to my newspaper job and see my mom again, says Moria. So we're going to gain Adventure Card 4, which is Moria herself. There she is. For one command, we can gain a uh, perception, and or we can use it to actually help defend ourselves. On top of that, we also get to gain Quest 45, which says Moria the Reporter. We rescued a woman named Moria in the desert. She says she's from Chicago and that we might find a totem in the alley markets of Elzaria. So we're going to go check. <laughs> All roads lead back to Elzaria, apparently. We're going to go ahead and gain that. Now, of course, I do have to lose one food here as well. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that grain, which we really needed. I needed that grain. Now we're going to return to our ship. Having completed our two actions, we're going to go ahead and move into our ship phase. I'm going to go ahead and move back to the bridge because we've got command absolutely everywhere all over the board. We're going to get rid of all the command on of our people and everything else. I'm going to go ahead and gain three command, and I'm also going to get to draw a card and see if it's something we want to keep. I have found, oh, it's that power strike. I can discard this card. Oh, that's going to be awesome. We're going to get rid of something for that for sure. I'm going to go ahead and discard this Five. I want to put this five back in the deck because we're getting really close to having to shuffle again and it's good to have those cards in there. We're done with that. We're going to go ahead now and check and see what our next card is. 
It is flying debris. During the windstorm, a tree branch lands on the deck, hitting Kanan. Oh, that's terrible. I gained a vegetable. That's fantastic. Oh, Kanan loses two health. That's too bad for him. All right, we're going to go ahead and discard this, but I do get one vegetable. And sadly, Kanan is taking two. He doesn't have any damage yet, so that's his first two that he's going to take. Let's go ahead and move into our two actions. We're going to go to port for our first action, so I'm going to go ahead and gain one grain. Then the next thing we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to go ahead and hit the inn. I'm going to pay three coins, which I have plenty of. We're going to go ahead and pay those three coins to remove one fatigue from absolutely everybody, which is all these negative ones. Look at these. Oh my gosh, they're all over the board. All right, here we go. We got rid of those. I think there's one I should have got. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine. I think these two did not have negative ones. So we're going to go ahead and remove those. I'm wrong. It's okay. We're going to go ahead and do that. Then I get to also remove one damage from everybody, which really isn't going to help too much because I left a ton of people with tons of damage on them. But that's okay. Next, we're going to go ahead and see what we can do. We're going to repair our ship. Our ship is taking one, two, three, four, five damage. We're going to go ahead and take all five of that damage off and use two materials and three bucks in order to clear that. So we're going to go ahead and use those resources to clear that. Next, we're going to go ahead and buy experience points. We only don't have two artifacts, so we're going to go ahead and buy up some level cards. And I've got these two. We've got 11 experience points. These are the two we're going to buy. We're going to slot this one with Marco here. And we're going to go ahead and put this with Kasumi. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Mac. Mac gets this, not Kasumi. What am I doing? All right, Mac gets that. Now, I've still got a lot of fatigue out there. It'd be kind of nice to almost go ahead and go that in again. But I believe I have to do a port action again in order to take advantage of that. I don't think I can just keep going to this over and over. And I don't want to waste my second action coming back to port just to use that in again. So we're going to go ahead and move this time and hopefully not bog ourselves down with a bunch of tokens. Hopefully, we can maybe find some food to get rid of this. We're going to go ahead and move next, and we're going to use this to move. I'm going to go ahead and pay my uh, one command wheel to move the ship three distance. That's absolutely awesome. It's the best card ever. We're going to move it one, and then we're going to go down here to page 10. So let's go ahead and flip to page 10, which we've been to before, but we know where Minotaur is. So I've gone, sorry, one two down to here and then three to here. Minotaur is actually right there. I remember writing it in our journal. So I'm going to go ahead and explore number 62. There it is. If keyword Minotaur turned to 62.5. Surrounded by a moat of rough azure sea stands a tower of orange sandstone, an anchor amid the eternal whirling waters. Kasumi spies a stone pier near the bottom of the cliffs and a narrow stairway to an opening in the rock. Armed and alert, you ascend, ready for a fight, but nothing stops you from passing through the impossible tall iron doorway into the fortress. Then you hear shuffling from the shadows. We can either combat something level 10, not even sure what it is, and or we can retreat. We're totally going to take these guys on. We've got our cards, 15, 17, 26. We have a big old truffle shuffle here and flip them out onto the board. We've got a skeleton, a mummy, and, and a flying eye. So a drying dead a skeletal hunter and a flying eye. We're going to see how we can do against these guys. Now, this is the first person we've seen with flying. This means it gets plus one defense against us if we don't use a ranged weapon. Lucky for us, we have a few ranged weapons, so it shouldn't be too bad. Now, this one has four health. This one has four health, but that needs a seven to hit it, but that's going to be okay. I think we're going to be just fine. I'm going to go ahead and start with Audrey. Audrey's going to come in with that hammer. Remember, she's got that awesome hammer. So go ahead and use that. I've got my four command, and I get two command from my captain for in, when we start combat, and I have two commands. So we're going to go ahead and start with her, see if she can hit this guy for four damage. We're going to go ahead, flip our card. we got three. That's perfect. Four, five. That does one, two, three, four damage. This guy is dead. He does not get to retaliate, and I can pass my token to another person. So we're going to go ahead and give her one of these, and we're going to go ahead and move into our next person's turn. But i got to figure out who we're going to give this to. We're going to give that to Kanan. Kanan's going to come in because Kanan does have a pistol that is able to hit in the air, and he gets plus two to his attack. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can hit this eye. Let's see how we do. We got a two, three, four, five. We hit him. We got plus three, two, five. Totally hit him. We did four damage. I'm going to use this token. Do one, two, three, four. We have hit this guy. He is dead out of the game. I'm going to give this token back to her. He's going to take one of these tokens, and we're going to move into our next character to see if we can finish this guy off by only needing four more damage again. I think we're going to bring in her again. She's going to come back in. She's going to see if she can do it. She's got this brand new hammer, and she's rocking it. She's going to see if she can take this guy down. She gets plus two. She needs to get a five or better. Let's see how she does. She's got a three. That's okay. I'm going to go ahead and use my two command to give myself plus two to my attack. 
and we're going to go ahead and use our totem here to give us plus two. So we have two, five, six, seven. That's enough to do four damage. One, two, three, four. This guy's dead. We were able to kill him in one shot. So that's how you do it. That's how you get rid of a bunch of monsters inside a cave. We're going to keep our command and we're going to go ahead and move into the rest of the story about this place. 62.1, the ghoulish fiends are gone, but the sounds of your struggle have awakened more monsters. Their distant screams echo from deep within the fortress. Command your crew forward into the fortress, cunning five. Fail two health and gain one more morale. I'm not too worried about that. We're going to go ahead and do that. I'm not even going to use any of my people because I'm going to save them for something else. Let's see how we do here. we got a five. That's perfect. That's exactly what we needed. We're going to go ahead and turn to 62.2. But before we do, we're going to go ahead and eat some food. I think this is the time to do it. I'm going to go ahead and use this grain to go ahead and use, what is this, our mixed salad, which means I also have to go ahead and use a command for that. And we're going to go ahead and take this fatigue off of her and two damage. You never know what's coming, and I don't want her to not be able to do her full potential of damage. Now we're going to go ahead and move to 62.2. At the center of the fortress, light seeping through the cracked walls, stands the Great Hall. The redrents of this massive room beckon you to battle. A deadly archer, ten feet tall, with pronged head and piercing eyes, pulls back an arrow as thick as a spear. He aims it at your head, while an abhorrent hag mumbles enchantments from the shadows. We have a level 18. It's going to be a lot tougher than what we just did. Let's go ahead and give these a good old truffle shuffle and see which ones we get. We're going to go ahead and put that one there, that one there, and that one there. Oh my gosh, look at these guys. These guys look really cool. Level 9. Oh my gosh. And a dark wit drog witch, level 70. And again, this skeletal warrior. Okay, maybe I can start with him and I can start passing tokens. That might be the way we do this. We're going to take our four cubes here, and I get two command for the start of the battle, and we also get two command from what we had left over. I think, again, we are going to start with Audrey and her super Warhammer of Thor power. We're going to go ahead and draw a card. I'm going to have her go after this person right here, but we can take him out and pass her token. Let's see how this goes. Oh, we got a five. That's perfect. That's exactly, well, exactly what we needed. We got an extra, actually. We're going to go ahead and do four damage. One, two, three, four, straight down this, killing off this spectral warrior, or skeletal warrior, meaning I can go ahead and pass this. And we're going to pass it over to Kanan. Kanan is going to be our second person to go. I'm going to go ahead and give her that token. Kanan's going to come in with his pistol here. His pistol gets plus two to attack, and it also can go diagonal. So I'm hoping I can go straight down this. Now, it only gets plus three to this, so I need to get a four or better in order to actually hit with this card. Let's see how we do. We got a two. That's terrible. Um, but maybe I can just add my plus two. I think we're going to do that. I'm going to give command to this, and I'm going to get plus two here. So that's two, four, five, six, seven. That's enough to do three damage. So we're going to go ahead and take our cubes. I'm going to do one, two, three, and then I'm also going to do one, two. I'm going to actually use our horn. Our horn is going to be used to do the extra two. I miscalculated how much damage I actually need to take this person out. So one, two, three, four, five. I still get to keep the token, but I get to pass this one, I think. No, I don't get to pass my token. Huh. That's no good. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, don't get to pass the token. Oh, well, we're going to go ahead and get rid of her. That's totally fine. We're going to get rid of our card, too, and we're going to move him off because I think we're done with him. I don't think he's... Well, he might come back because he has that... He has plus one damage token, which is pretty good. But now we need to try to take this guy out. He's going to get first strike, so he's going to do four, five, six, seven damage to something before I can even attack him. Oh, who wants to be our sacrificial person for this? Our sacrificial lamb is going to be this poor guy. We're going to go ahead and give him a target token. He's going to use his plus four to hit this. He only needs a two or better. Let's see how we do. We've got a five. That's enough to hit him. So he's going to be able to do three damage, but he gets first strike, which means he can do four, five, six, seven damage first. He gets to counterattack before we actually do any, before we actually get our damage onto him. So he's going to take five damage, and I'm going to pass two of this. Over two, I think we're going to give it to Marco. Marco's going to go ahead and take two. Then we're going to be able to do our three damage. So we're going to go ahead and cover up these evil things here. One, two, and three. Those are absolutely terrible. Now he only does four damage. It's a little bit easier. And we're going to be able to pass our token as well. So we're going to go ahead and give this to somebody. I think we're going to go ahead and pass this over to the captain. No, that captain doesn't have very good accuracy. We've got to hit this with a six. Oh, this is tough. I think we're going to give it back to Audrey. Audrey only needs a four then in order to hit this thing. Let's see how she does. She's going to come in with her hammer again because her hammer is awesome. 
we're going to see what we can do. We're going to go ahead and give her another little thing here. And we're going to go ahead and shuffle up our deck. I need to get a four or better in order to hit this guy. It doesn't have first strike anymore because we're able to cover that up with our last attack from Laurent. Sorry, Laurent, you got killed doing it, but that's okay. <laughs> he was able to help out pretty good. <clears throat> Let's go ahead and roll, or not roll our dice. We're going to pick our cards. We got five. That's perfect. Five, six, seven. That's enough to hit him. We're in for four, five damage. I think that's going to be great. Let's go ahead and put our tokens on. So we're going to put them one, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, no, this is bad. Oh, I got a better idea. We're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and cover up that poison. I don't want to get venomed either. All right, so I think that's four, four, five. She only did five. What am I doing? One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. Just like that. That's the end of our actions. He's going to now shoot us for four damage. So I have to give that to somebody. We're going to give all four of this. We're going to give three of it to Marco. Marco's going to take, nope, Marco's going to take two. Otherwise, he'll die. I have two more left to give out. I think we're going to give out two over to Gregory. Gregory's going to go ahead. No, actually, Gregory's not because Gregory has Venom. He was supposed to take one damage at the start of this turn. So he's got that Venom token. So, I, so he actually has four health right now. He's going to take one more. And I'm going to go ahead and give this to somebody else then. I'm going to give this to... We're going to give it to Kasumi. Kasumi's going to go ahead and take one damage. We're doing okay. We just have to do three, four, five, six damage into attacks. That should be pretty okay. I think we can do it. So we're going to take back all of these tokens that we use to try to hit our bad guy with. And I think we're going to bring her back in because she does four damage. Why wouldn't you bring a person that does four damage to the fight? I think that's your best bet. She's going to go ahead and take, and she's got better accuracy too than our captain. So she's going to go ahead, take her thing, take her card, and she got a six. She did four damage. We're going to go ahead and place the damage markers out on this track. We got one, two, three, four. I just need to do three more. Now he's going to hit her back for four. She's got a block of one, so she's going to take three damage. We're going to move her out, and then somebody else is going to come in for the final blow. I only have to do three more damage. We're going to take the person that has the highest accuracy with three damage. So, oh man, that's a tough call. I think we're going to go ahead and use... Gregory with his fishbone bow. He has three accuracy with this. Let's get this guy back in the picture here. Let's see how he goes. Let's see if we can take this guy down. I got a six. That's three damage to this guy. He is down for the count, I believe. Yes, here he is. I've knocked off some of his things coming over, dragging over. We're going to go ahead and put our three damage right here. And he is also perished. We have survived yet again another battle. Having destroyed the monsters, we're moving to 62.4. The hall empties left unguarded now. A pedestal in the center of the room offers a glowing stone. Gain two materials, six coins, five experience points, and adventure card number 42. This also completes quest 42, our minotaur. So I'm going to go ahead and discard this. Here's our spoils. We're going to go ahead and put them right there. And I have gained another totem. This one is allowing this is a stone of weakness. It allows me to put one damage onto an enemy, but not on hearts. So I don't think I'm ever going to use this. I don't know about that. It doesn't seem like a very good one. We're going to go ahead now and move into... Oh, we get one more action because we used their card to move three squares. So we're going to go ahead and move. And I'm actually going to exhaust Audrey here. I'm going to go ahead and go for the gusto here. We're going to see if we can get this nine. That's what I really want to get. Let's see how we do it. We got a, oh, we got, oh, we got five. Oh, for a second there, we got, we got this. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. We did do it. We got nine, which means I'm able to move four squares, and I don't have to worry about any of those hazards. So that's going to be awesome. Let's go ahead and move our ship. We're going to move one, two, three to right here, ignoring all of the hazards. And that's going to be the end of this turn. Next turn, I think we're going to, we're going to have to go to port because our guys are in big trouble. Before we move on to our next turn, I am going to use two command to get rid of the venom on his card. Otherwise, he will die, and that'll be bad news. So we're going to go ahead and heal that. That's the end of our turn. Let's move to our ship actions. We have a lot of command out on that board, but sadly, I can only get rid of two of it. And I think the two I'm going to get rid of is going to be on the stone, and we're going to get rid of the two on top of Vienna. Or Vienna. We're going to go ahead and gain three command. Perfect, just like that. And now we're going to move into our card. Oh, I get to draw a card. Let's see what I get. I got three fishing. When you use the deck, draw fate, gain plus four, and one meat. When you use the, oh, the deck, okay. No, we're not gonna keep that, I don't ever use the deck. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and start draw this card. And how many do we have left? Two, two more actions. All right, we're gonna go ahead, abandon canoe. The crew spots a lone canoe. Search it, perception six. Ta fail, take three health, or gain a vegetable. We're just gonna draw the card and hope for a six. Oh, not a six, okay. Not the end of the world. We're gonna go ahead and take, was it three health? That's no big deal. But I do get to gain one vegetable. Sadly, I'm running out of people to put health on. I'm just gonna go ahead and 
and throw these out on the board. Let's see here. I'm going to put them all on. I'm going to put these all on Kanan. We're just going to throw them all there onto Kanan, and I get a vegetable, which is going to be key. We're going to go ahead and put this vegetable right here. That's awesome. Big fan of that vegetable. Let's go into our actions. First one's going to be that port action. My super banged up crew really needs to get to port. I get to gain one of these. Then I get to go ahead and to go to the inn, I get to pay three, one, two, three, to go ahead and get rid of all the fatigue we were worried about, which is awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of all of this. And then I also get to heal everybody one point of damage, which is really only going to help her because all the rest of them, I'm gonna go ahead and use the healer. Sadly, last time we went here, I forgot to use the healer. We're gonna go ahead and repair a ship with no damage here. I forgot this last time. Pay one per crew to restore all health. We're gonna do that. I'm gonna go ahead and pay, oh, she only has one on her. Maybe I should keep the one on Kasumi. I'm gonna take the one off the captain, that's fine. So one, we're gonna pay to get Audrey, so that's two. We're gonna pay to get Kanan, so that's three. Four for Marco, and then five for Raphael. There, all of our characters are totally healed, which is great. We're going to go ahead and pay our five gold, and we still have 20 gold left after that. Now, I don't have any artifacts to do, and I have five experience points. So I might as well buy a card if I got one. I mean, you're, you're here. Why not, right? I think we're going to go ahead and give Gregory this card right here. I don't even know what it does. Don't care. All I'm looking for is this skill nowadays. This one, I can restore one health to any crew member that enters the sick bay, which is going to be just fine. Um, I think that's going to be the one we do. Wow, why not? The rest of them aren't that great. Actually, no, they're that great. But at least it helps with the savvy. We got a lot of savvy people out there. That's awesome. Savvy's good. I like being savvy. At this point, our two quests have Grandfather and Moria. Both these have to do with Lazaria. This is the lower docks, and this one is the markets, alley markets. So we're going to have to move one in order to get there. So let's go ahead and draw our card. We got a four. Totally fine. We're moving right there. That's our two actions. Let's go to the ship. Before we decide where we want to go, I want to get rid of a weekend token. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this weekend token by spaying by paying two on, oh, I can't do it because Gregory still has two on him. Gregory's the only way to get rid of weakened tokens. That's terrible. I'm going to go ahead and grab three command because I'm going to be moving up to the bridge and we're going to go ahead and remove all the command off of everything we have out there, which is going to be the two off Gregory, which is be good. So I can hopefully do that weekend thing next turn, which is fine. I get to draw a card. Let's see what we got. We got a two alert. Discard this card. I'm going to go ahead and put that alert in here and remove this card. I'm going to discard that one. And we're going to draw our next event and see what we got. We have loose supplies, creates a float on the sea after a trade ship meets an untimely end. Watch for this per, per supplies, perception six, fail again, a low morale, discard this card with no further effect. Place a green token on two different regions of the Atlas you currently do not contain, that do not contain the ship. On these pages currently open. When you move to either region, gain the token there immediately. Hmm, interesting. Um, we're going to try to do that. I'm going to actually use uh, one of my dudes here that has some perception. No, I'm not. I'm not going to do that at all. I'm just going to flip the card and see what we get. We got a three. So I need three perception in order to make this, to make this happen. I'm just going to discard this and gain a low morale token. Totally fine. I'm, I'm fine with just a low morale token. I can go ahead and remove that by using one command on our crate. I've got a crate right here. It gets rid of low command. Ha! Get rid of that one. So I'm not even going to take the low command token. We're good to go. We're going to move into our two actions. Our first action is going to be into the alley markets. If keywords Moria turn to 215.1. Yes! Moria leads you to a shop hidden within a maze of alleyways deep in the city. The shop is filled to the brim with trinkets of every kind, barbed whips of Zokmir, Lucran oil paintings, and mechanical toys, culprits of the gods, and Mythian knives and tridents. I have a special item, says the shop owner, but I feel it like it might be meant for you. With a flash, a rose suddenly appears in his hand and hands it to Moria. You can stop with the theatrics, says Moria, tossing the rose to Audrey. I've bought enough junk from you to know all of your tricks. The shop owner grins, ah, well, down to business. You may pay two artifacts. Oh, no, we only have one to gain. Oh, to gain a totem. That's terrible. To complete quest 45. Well, I can't complete this, so I'm just going to return to the ship. That makes me sad. So we have to go here again when we have two artifacts. Our next place is the lower docks, 196. And if keyword grandfather, turn to 9, 196.1. Then they lead you through an old town near the lower docks. There are a few houses left among the fisher's stall. In the center of one of the doors is an ornate carving of a fish. This looks like the one that grandfather used to carve. She knocks on the door, but there is no answer. 
So I can either break down the door, eh, not gonna happen, I have a feeling that's a bad idea. Instead, we're gonna go ahead and search for another way inside Perception 9. Let's go ahead and see what we can do about that. I've got a lot of guys now with Perception. I think we're gonna go ahead and give a Fatigue token to Laurent. He's got two Perception now, so he's gonna take one of them. And who else has Perception for us? Nobody, nobody else has Perception. So I get two, and I need a nine, I need a seven. I don't think that's gonna happen very well. Well, I do have some cards that could help me out as well. I've got a total of three perception out there. So two, I think I'm gonna have to give another token to somebody. We're gonna give a token to Mac. Mac's gonna take a fatigue token so that she can help out. So that's plus three at least. Let's go ahead and see how we do. We're gonna go ahead and draw our card. We got, we got a four. All right, so we gotta figure out some math now. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I need two more, not a big deal. I've got one command to put on my Lucran goggles here. They're gonna give us two perception. So that'll be perfect. We've got our nine. We're gonna go to 210.1. You climb onto the roof. It's steep and slippery, and you slide down into the back alley. There you find a cracked window and squeeze through. A layer of dead dust covers what used to be comfortable furnishing. A colorful rug, three carved chairs, and two beds neatly made. In the kitchen, an old man sits in a chair preparing a fishing pole. Venmay walks up to the old man and slaps him in the face. You left us alone and everything fell apart, she says. Oh, Venme, you found me, he responds weakly. I'm ashamed of myself for leaving, but your grandmother didn't want me around anymore. Venme hesitates. She sits down next to him. But she told me you, she begged you to stay. The old man lets out a cackle, which turns into a fit of coughing. What? No, she told me I had to go, so I did. Come back to my old house. I was going to start up a search for totems again, but I only found one. You can have it. I don't need it, but stay here with me, won't you, Venmay? Does your grandmother know you're here? Grandmother's dead, says Venmay. The old man is silent. He quickly takes a carved stone from around his neck and hands it to Venmay. Venmay walks with you back to the manticore. I think I'm going to stay here with my grandfather, she says but I wish you luck on your journey home. She gives you her grandfather's totem. So we gain two coins, a meat, two experience points, and adventure card 61. And we're gonna go ahead and lose her. So that means we're gonna go ahead and take uh, her and put her back in the box. She no longer gets to be with us. So sorry, so sorry. I love this plus two attack, darn it. Or accuracy, I should say. Let's go ahead and gain all those things. We're gonna gain a meat two bucks, but I'm actually going to take one. I didn't, I failed to realize that he, Laurent had this on him. I had to actually take that off and I had to pay for it. So I wouldn't have left him with five damage. I wouldn't have left him dead when I went to healer. All right, we're going to go ahead and get our next totem here. Oh, look, more strength. The stone of muscle. Yeah, roar. Eat your heart out, Hulk. We're going to go ahead and put that over there. And that's going to be the end of our two actions, sadly. And we're going to go ahead and move into our next turn. I actually am going to go to the sick bay. I'm going to gain three command there. I only have one command command out on the board, so I'm not too worried about it. And the reason I want to go there is Kasumi still actually has one damage on her, so she's going to go ahead and do that. We're also going to go ahead, let's hear it. says, restore one health to another crew member when you need time you use a sick bay. Nobody else has taken any damage, which is fine. But now I can also go ahead and spend these two command. I'm actually going to do that. I lied. Got a plan. We're going to go ahead before we use our ship action to go ahead and use this to get rid of the weakened token off of, uh, what's his name? Raphael, perfect. Then we're gonna go actually to the quarters, I did lie. I am gonna take the two uh, command. We're gonna go ahead and give it back to ourselves. Because we're gonna take all this off our characters. Then we're gonna go ahead and use the two again to get rid of this weakened token yet again on Marco. There we go, we're gonna draw a card for going to the quarters. We got a five. Discard this equipped card and travel to distance. And eh, no, I think it goes to discard right now. We're gonna go ahead and do that. Then we're gonna draw our card here and see what we get. We have crashed airship. You find a Lucran airship stuck on some rocks. Search the ship, draw two search tokens and choose one. Apply the effects, then discard the tokens or leave the ship. We're gonna do the tokens. That's gonna to be awesome. I think the two are good. It's been a long time since I looked at these tokens. One was meat and that and the other one. Oh, this is a low morale token and a buck. All right, well, that's no good. Let's go ahead and read this real quick. It does say, draw two search tokens and choose one. Apply the effects, then discard the tokens. Okay, I get to choose one. That's awesome. So we're not going to choose this one. That one's going to be bad. We're going to put that one away. Instead, I'm going to go ahead and gain a meat, and I'm also going to gain a carrot. All right, we're back in business when it comes to food. We were, doing, we're down in the dumps with food, but now we're doing okay. Now we're going to go ahead and take our two actions. 
Our first action is to move one, two, three using this card right here. I'm going to go ahead and put a command on that. That way we can move three, and that's not, actually that's not even an action. What am I talking about? But I do have to pass this six savvy test. I'm not going to use anybody. We're just going to, we got a one, definitely not going to use that. I'm going to take one ship damage. We're going to take the ship damage to number four. Let's go ahead and put that right in the galley. We're going to go and check out 79. So that's our first action. We have seen 79 before. A massive triangular arch stands out in the ocean, tall enough for the manticore to pass under. Upon ancient stonework, the strange symbols you copy down on your notebook. Suddenly, the air within the arch shimmers. On the opposite side, a jungle island appears. We're totally going to take that. I'm going to go ahead and sail through the arch, 79.1. When you reach the opposite side of the arch, you turn back and find that it has disappeared. The jungle island lies before you, but the horizon is different here. Gain 1 XP and quest 110, then move the ship to 101 on Atlas page 6, then return to the ship. We are here at 101 on Atlas 6, and we have a quest here called Sandstone. A triangular arch in the middle of the sea led us to a faraway island. Marking instructed us to say the password at midnight and return to the arch. Note, as an action, you may move the ship to location 79 on Atlas page 10. All right, so if we ever want to get back, we totally can. Or um, I don't think we're going to, but it'd <laughs> be kind of interesting. We're here. Do you want to check out 101? We could. Or should we just go over to one of these places? Maybe the Crypt of Vol or the Hunter's Haven. Let's go to the Hunter's Haven. I'm going to go ahead and do a move action. I'm going to take my card and move. We got a two. We didn't move very far. We only moved one space. Oh, it's terrible. Um, maybe I could boost it up. I could. I could go ahead and add three. I could add three. Why don't we do that? That'll bring it to a five. We're going to go ahead and use our command on our ghostly satchel here. That gives us a five, meaning we're able to go two spaces. One, two. And I didn't do this action down here. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to because I didn't actually move into the square. Peered in the square. I don't know what the rules on that is, but I'm not going to do it. Just to, to, we're, We'll be just fine. Doing it or not, two damage isn't the end of the world. But we're going to end up over here now. But first, we have to go ahead and do our ship actions. But we're going to do those in the next video. We have gone through, we only have, two, what is it, 12 cards left, and then the finale. And that's going to be in the next video. Oh, this is so much fun. I found some good totems. We have a total of, what, one, two, three, four, five. We've got some good ones here. Hopefully, I'm doing as good, if not, maybe a little bit better than Colin. Again, don't know exactly how he's doing. I haven't heard anything. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We have seven totems. Man, that's pretty good. I can't imagine doing any better than that. Of course, I'll probably know that when I'm done. I'll find out Colin has like 32 or something. <laughs> He's pretty good at games like this, so I wouldn't doubt it. That's the end here. I hope you're enjoying the playthrough. If you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so that you know when the next video comes out. Also, please feel free to leave anything in the comments below. I would love to hear from everyone. I'm having a fantastic with Sleeping Gods. I hope you guys are enjoying this playthrough, and I hope you get a chance to actually experience this game for yourself sometime. It is an absolute blast. Again, thank you so much for watching, and if you're excited to see what happens to the brave crew of the Manticore, then I need you to meet me at the table.